Hello you beautiful audience. This is Reddit Stories. And today's topic is 9 Wholesome Stories Part 6 1. First Real Christmas My daughters came to live with us in late November 2004 from a crappy foster care situation and living in a van with their drug-addled prostitute biological mom before that. Things were still very new to them. They were still adjusting to their new home and were amazed at the simple things like eating, playing with toys that belonged to them and having nice clothes to wear. When the Christmas tree went up, they didn't have any idea what it was. They thought it was pretty and enjoyed decorating it and looking at it but other that, no clue. When we talked about Santa they were clueless about that as well. They couldn't believe such a thing was possible. They were 4 and 5 years old at this point and had never experienced a Christmas of any consequence. We took them to the nice mall for a visit to Santa. They asked, Dad, that man really brings us presents. Of course, I explained and told them the whole deal. I was really bothered by the fact that they came from a foster home and never got a single present, a tree, or any of the traditions associated with it. When we picked up the girls from the foster home, the foster mom didn't give us anything except a bag of men's tube socks, no toys, dolls, nothing. Gradually stacks of presents gathered under the tree, and on Christmas Eve we put out milk and cookies for Santa. They were very skeptical about the whole deal and were questioning the whole down the chimney thing and trying to find holes in my story. We were listening to Christmas music and reading stories and they kept running to the front window. I thought they were looking for Santa. Finally, I said, Santa won't come till later after you are asleep. The girls said, no dad we are looking for the policemans they always come get us at Christmas. Sad. Anyway, when the girls went to sleep I put on my big work boots stomped them around in the fireplace and left dirty boot prints on the white carpet leading to the cookies, took a bite, drank some milk, put out the Santa presents and went to sleep. The next morning about 8 am I heard a tremendous squealing and laughing. They dragged me downstairs to show me the footprints and the half-eaten cookie. He's real. He's real. They didn't care about the presents at all. They were caught up in the magic and that was fine with me. 2. My baby chameleon really trusts me. So I have a baby chameleon named Disco. He's only a few months old and we've only had him for a few weeks. He won't eat out of my hand yet and tries to run away from me when I get him out to feed him. Because of these things, I was worried that he didn't like me very much. However, he proved that to be wrong today. I had him out as usual and was letting him run around a little bit since he loves to walk after eating. I got home a little late today, so I had to feed him after it was his bedtime. Still, he had plenty of energy to walk around and turn his happy colors while he walked. After a while, he started to turn into a slightly darker color. I was worried that he was hurt somehow, since I'm a little paranoid about them getting hurt after an unfortunate fall killed a different chameleon of mine. I got close to him to inspect him and make sure he was okay. When I did, he grabbed my one long strand of hair. He loves to climb that strand BTW. I watched as he climbed it to make sure he was okay. He was perfectly fine and walking slash climbing normally. I watched in my mirror as he carefully climbed his way to the top while pushing more of my hair over him. Then he did something absolutely adorable. He made my hair into a little covering and got into his sleeping position. He curled up his tail and closed his eyes. He started to fall asleep on my head. Those dark colors are actually his pajama patterns. He likes and trusts me enough that he was willing to use me as a bed rather than literally anything else that could act as a bed. I couldn't believe it. After I was done being overwhelmingly happy about it, I carefully removed him and put him back in his tank where he usually falls asleep in. He looked disappointed, but he made a leaf bed and fell asleep in there. I still can't believe how much he actually trusts me. 3. I found my stepson's reddit account and I have been upvoting every single one of his comments. 
My stepson is 13, soon to be 14, and he doesn't have a whole lot of friends. He's been doing online school since the pandemic and hasn't gone out too much, partly because we fear for his health due to his asthma, and the other part is that he's pretty introverted. He plays games, watches anime with me, watches YouTube, and recently, I allowed him to make a Reddit account. I respect his privacy, so I didn't ask to see his username or know any of his general login information. As long as he's being respectful to people online and not finding himself into the darkest parts of the internet, I'm fine with him being online. I've done significantly worse when I was his age. Recently, he showed me a comment he made that got 100 upvotes and he was so happy. A genuine smile from ear to ear, and it was honestly a silly comment, but people liked it. He was happy that he has people liking his comments and giving him karma. But when he showed me, I remembered his username and decided to look him up. And I've been upvoting every single one of his comments, and I will continue to do so for as long as he posts. Yeah, some of them might be cringy, some of them might be unnecessary, and some of them are actually pretty funny, but if something this small makes him happy, then I'll continue to do so. He doesn't have a lot of people to talk to other than his father, me, and a portion of my family. Sometimes he will talk to kids after school in Zoom, but that's it. I just want to keep him happy, even if I have to do little things like this from afar. 4. Long but worth the red, this still brings me to tears. So when I was in my senior year of high school I used to tutor students for some extra cash. A guidance counselor who knew I tutored asked me if I could help this freshman, let's call him Tommy, in English and business because his mom called the school and said her son needed some extra help. I agreed and she gave me the mom's contact info and I messaged her, she was really kind but warned me that Tommy was an extremely shy kid with a lot of self-esteem issues, I said it was no problem whatsoever. My first few sessions with Tommy went well, he was honestly a pretty smart kid but he doubted himself so much that it caused him to do poorly, he couldn't even make eye contact with me. Our sessions mainly consisted of my reassuring him he was on the right path and reviewing his work. I always saw him walking home alone so I asked him if he knew my sister because she was in his grade and he said he didn't talk to anyone and didn't have any friends, but I would always catch him staring at groups of freshmen walking by talking and laughing and it broke my heart. I was lucky enough to have a lot of really great friends in high school so I had an idea. One day he met up with me at the library, which was also a common spot to hang out after school at my HS, and instead of grabbing a separate table for just the two of us I went Tommy we're gonna do something different today, my friends got us a table and we're gonna go sit with them while I tutor you he looked so scared but he nodded his head. We sat down and I told my friends, hey everyone this is Tommy, Tommy this is Sarah, Dallas, Johnny, Greg, and Ronnie and they all welcomed him so kindly and Dallas and Johnny asked him a bunch of questions about himself, they were pretty well known at my school, and Sarah told him she loved his hair. You could see his eyes just light up, and when the freshmen in his class walked by that week they all stared and asked how he knew who all these seniors were and how he got to sit with them, he looked so happy it made my heart melt. Anyway for the rest of the semester he sat with my friends as I tutored him and my friends always treated him like a part of our group for those two hours three times a week. And Tommy changed. He stopped doubting himself so much and his grades got higher and he stopped slouching all the time. He even started to tease me about my boyfriend and excitedly talk about sports with the guys. After exams at the end of the semester his mom sent me a long paragraph thanking me for everything, she said she had no idea what I did but I changed her son's life. It made me really happy, and as I was driving home one day with my friends I saw him walking home from school with three other boys from his grade and they were all talking and laughing. A couple years later my sister told me, remember Tommy, you tutored him before you graduated, I wanted you to know that he's a bit of a class clown these days, and he has a ton of friends, I thought it would make you happy to know that and it literally brought tears to my eyes. I did the smallest thing but it really seemed to impact someone's life. I'll never forget it. 
5. 55 years or regret is about to disappear. I found a men's class ring while metal detecting with my sons. The ring is from a local university and dated 1965 with initials engraved inside the band. I posted about this ring on a Facebook page dedicated to lost class rings around 7 a.m. in the morning. A member of the group researched the JCU yearbook to find his name and then used a people finder site to get a phone number and messaged me by 7.30. I waited till 8 o'clock to call. A gentleman answered the phone and I asked for him by name. This is he. Hi, my name is Mike Gibson and this may sound a little weird, but I was out metal detecting with my boys this weekend around the Chagrin River and found a class ring. I heard a slight gasp. I remember exactly where I lost it, we were climbing the rocks along the river. I heard joy and disbelief in his voice. I then began to realize this was real. He went on to tell me he didn't come from a rich family so the $80 he'd spent on the ring was a lot of money. He did not have the ring very long before losing it. It is something that I've regretted my whole life, he said. So much so that he bought a replacement ring about 10 years ago. Now I am beginning to realize the opportunity to help teach our kids an important life lesson that they will never forget. I asked him if he would mind coming to our house for dinner to get the ring and tell us his story, he agrees immediately. That would be great, I would love to meet your kids and tell them my story. So now we have set a date for dinner on Saturday March 7th. That's the next time we will have all of our kids together, do you mind waiting until then? I've waited 55 years, another week won't kill me. Stay tuned. 6. My Nana Takes Down a Racist Teacher Okay. So my little sister, M, is really white, despite being half black. The only black thing about her is her hair. She was in like the third or fourth grade, and the teacher had them draw a self-portrait. My sister colored herself white and the teacher saw and said she had to color herself black. My sister tried to explain that her skin was white but the teacher kept saying she was black so she had to color herself black. This went on for 15 minutes and at the end the teacher was screaming at my sister to color herself black. My sister, sobbing, obeyed and colored herself black. And I mean black. Not brown, not tan, but charcoal black. My sister told my nana and my nana was so angry. My nana is a teacher too and you can imagine how this made her feel. But she actually had a meeting with all the teachers and principal a couple of days later. IEP things. She went to the meeting and brought my other sister, A, who's a lot darker than M with her. After all the hellos were said, the principal asked my nana if she had anything she'd like to say. My nana said yes and stood up to her full five feet, looked directly into that teacher's eyes and said I want you to explain to me, why you thought it was appropriate to force a crying child to color herself black. The teacher went pale and tried to stutter excuses, but my nana wasn't having it. In a calm cool voice, she torn that teacher apart. She even brought A into the mix asking the teacher if she would force A to color herself black. The teacher said no. And my nana asked why she made M do it when A is darker than her. After 30 minutes, my nana was done. The teacher was pale and silent. The principal was red and kept apologizing. My nana sat down and calmly spent the rest of the time, talking about IEPs for my sisters. I have more stories like this if you want. 7. A little girl tried to teach me how to go up the stairs. I am Korean and I went overseas to study English when I was 12. I stayed at the home of a lovely family. The kids were very kind and thoughtful, especially the girl. She was about 4 or 5 years old and was a very sweet. One day, she took me in front of the stairs in their porch, and tried to teach me how to use it, like you put your foot on the first one, and to the next one. The parents must have told the kids that I am from different country and might not understand some of the things there or have problem blending in, therefore they should help me. Also the mother was not a native English speaker so she understood the problems I had when I spoke in English. 
Every time I was trying to think of a certain word while talking with her, she encouraged me to keep trying and waited patiently until I finally came up with the word. If it wasn't for them, I would have lost my interest in studying English many years ago. 8. At 11 my cousin sends me dead memes and I love it. Recently my cousin got a phone and he's a year younger than me. He finally understood the joy I receive from laughing at memes. His mom set his age to 12 even though he's turning 14 next month since she knows I watch r slash antivax videos on my phone and she wants to keep him in her web of lies for as long as she can so he can only use YouTube kids and get apps that she approves of, so no reddit. So in order to get memes he googles them, finds funny ones, screenshots, and even goes through the effort of cropping them. At exactly 11 he sends me a message that says meme hurricane which warns me that he's going to spam me with memes so I turn off notifications. An hour later I go to his messages and turn notifications for him back on. I see memes from 2012 to 2016 and recent but he sends a lot of dead memes. I used to get annoyed but I realized this is his way of enjoying memes since he can't get new ones, I laugh along with him at the nostalgia because I used to google lol cat memes when I was 10 and in exchange I send him a meme of hurricanes that I get from reddit and other websites. I love that dork. 9. First time in gym from the perspective of an overweight nerd. A bit long, also sorry for the bad English, not my first language. So I was overweight my entire life and I was bullied a lot when I was a kid, I had no friends, the first actual friend I had was in high school, and most of my bullies were athletic so I always had a bad image of that whole culture. The past year I were in my lowest point, I was really depressed, self-harming, and I tried to commit suicide, fortunately I survived that and I decided to start improving myself. I decided to start working out and I went to the gym. I was really nervous but when I finally went there it was completely different from what I was imagining. Keep in mind this is in a small town in Algeria, Africa. I really don't like a lot of people here for good reasons, but in the gym it was completely different. Nobody made fun of me or make me feel uncomfortable or judged me, on the opposite everyone were so welcoming and very helpful, whenever I needed help with something nobody hesitated to help me, and everyone gave me good advice on how to do it properly. I guess what I'm trying to say is, if you want to start working out and you feel embarrassed or hesitated, please don't be. If people can be this nice in my shitty hometown, I'm pretty sure people are nice wherever you are, and experiencing that will give you a whole new view on things and that would boost your confidence a lot, and this is talking from personal experience. This whole thing helped me a lot, physically and mentally, and I'm so glad I'm doing it. This marks the end of the video. If you like my content, consider subscribing as it helps me a lot. See you until next time.